Interlagos has a ton of great overtaking opportunities and we especially saw that with Hamilton who was on fire today. He was finding different racing lines and getting past pretty much everyone on track. It's time now to review the Brazil Grand Prix. This race practically threw everything at Hamilton. Two penalties, one of course he knew coming into this week with that engine upgrade, but then also a disqualification in qualifying. We're not going to be covering sprint qualifying because that was pretty much an entire other race of its own. So now without further ado, be sure to leave this video a like, hit that subscribe button, and now Cass, when we look at the first half of this race, what'd you think, what caught your eye, and of course, how'd you score it? It was for sure a very eventful first half. I scored everything a seven across the board, and let me get into why, because right away we had a super chaotic first lap, Max taking the lead, which I very much did not expect after how things went down in sprint qualifying. Valtteri just kind of seemed a little bit out of sorts. Perez got the jump on him almost immediately, and then we just got the carnage. Super upsetting to see Lando with a very early puncture. I guess at least it happened early enough in the race that he was able to do a bit of a recovery drive, but like in the battle for P3, that's just not what McLaren needed today. And the racing was all over the place. You had cars running wide. You had people bumping into each other. Yuki and Lance going at it. I felt like lap after lap, somebody else just had something going wrong. Bodywork flying off. I mean, we had safety cars. We had virtual safety cars. The drama was up there, but mostly because it's Interlagos. It's kind of known for chaos. People don't necessarily always keep it clean around here, but that's also why we love it. Of course, a lot of my racing points go directly to Hamilton making his way through the grid. I mean, by the time we were at lap five, he was already in the top three. Yes, part of that was because Valtteri let him by, but you know, being a good teammate. But I think regardless, we all knew going into this race that that was bound to happen at some point or another. I was just so shocked to see it happen so early on. So obviously this means that my total score for the first half is at a seven. Some people may think that's fair. Some people may think that's low. I justified it by basically saying this was before we knew how pit stops were going to play into effect, which only added to the excitement for the second half, but more on that later. When looking back at the first half of this race for me, I was still not sure who was going to end up on top. I had my suspicions that Mercedes were going to do really well after what I saw in spring qualifying, but surprisingly Red Bull were holding them off pretty well up into the halfway mark. So I ended up scoring my excitement at a 6. I was really hoping for some wheel to wheel battles between Max and Lewis, but it just looked like the move was going to be a lot easier than I had thought. But now when looking at the other battles that we saw on track, I scored my racing at a 7 just like you. One battle I'd like to highlight was the battle between Hamilton and Perez. You thought the move was already done by Hamilton around turn 1, but then Perez came back and fought going into turn 4. That's the kind of racing I like to see, not just these moves that are one and done, some wheel to wheel battles that go lap after lap and take several different attempts to pull off. There was of course also just those collisions between drivers like you mentioned, which correlated to my drama, which I did score in eight. We had one safety car and two virtual safety cars in this first half. That safety car restart in and itself reminded me a lot of Magello. I was getting really nervous with everyone lining up on that pit lane. And then I found it still pretty dramatic that everyone was reacting one after another in the top four for those pit stops. I was quite surprised that Red Bull didn't do too much different of a strategy for Perez. Whereas when you see with Valsery, they kept him out a bit longer and it ended up benefiting him because he was able to pit under the virtual safety car. So overall, with all these different elements being thrown at us throughout this first half, when you combine all my scores together, it also comes out to a seven. A lot of the attention now for the second half shifted towards our battle for first place. You know, for a while, I really thought that the most dramatic portion of the second half was going to be all these pit stops. I mean, Max coming in and Williams launching another car ahead of him. I swear to God, like, is this Kubica all over again? And then you had Valtteri coming in, wondering if the team made the right call, if they brought him in too soon. He was on the radio saying, I think we just lost an easy one too. I mean, Hamilton only pitted two laps after Max. And it was quite interesting to hear him say, you gave me the wrong tires. I was at this point thinking, did Mercedes just throw away their entire race here? He's not feeling confident on these hard tires. I didn't know what was to come. But clearly Lewis had the pace. He only pitted, like you said, two laps after Max, but he was catching up so quickly. And now Cass, of course, 
We're looking into the battle now. Hamilton was making good gains on Max, getting up in his DRS, and it didn't seem like the turbulent air was too terrible in this race comparison to Mexico. I think I was surprised at how quickly he got within the DRS window, but once he was there, you pretty much knew it was only a matter of time. Took around two, three laps to get the move done, but yeah, that was a pretty dramatic moment. Both of them running super wide off track. Obviously, people being all up in arms about whether Max stopped turning, if it deserved a penalty, did it not deserve a penalty, was it reckless? So many questions going up in the air. So then, of course, it comes down to the stewards saying that this is a racing incident, no investigation necessary. F1 Twitter is up in arms. The commentators are pissed. Mercedes are pissed. Everything is basically just fire burning. What is going on? If you ask me though, I'm still a little bit on the fence. Don't come for me because I much prefer seeing drivers handle it on track. In this case, I guess sort of off track, <laughs> but at the end of the day, I do get that the stewards decisions do set a precedent. So this isn't just between Hamilton and Verstappen. You have to think of other drivers in a similar scenario. Would this fly? Probably not. So although it's my personal preference to not have penalties or time penalties or whatever come in the way, I kind of get that in this situation, some sort of penalty likely should have been applied. I'd say I'm on the boat where this deserves a penalty because right now it's pretty much setting the precedent that if your co competition is running up beside you, feel free to take that turn a little bit wider than you need to just to hold them off. Because when you look at Silverstone, I'm going back, even if you knocked out your competition and you were able to still hold, maybe Max was debating, oh, if we touch, I'll just get a 10 second time penalty and I can work that off. Yeah, I think our main issue with the FIA, and this has just been a long-standing issue this season, previous seasons, is that there's just no consistency. Whenever two drivers go into a scenario that we've seen before, we don't know if a penalty or lack thereof is going to be applied the same way. And I understand that racing isn't so black and white, but at the end of the day, these guys are supposed to be the experts and yet nobody can seemingly agree. You have to still think about it. Had the roles been reversed in this incident, would your opinion still be the same? So of course, we invite you to share your thoughts. Be respectful, please. Down in those comments, let us know, should it have been a penalty? Should it have been just a racing incident like the stewards decided it was? We wanna hear from you. Recapping it back to the race, a few laps later, Hamilton did make the move past Verstappen. Pretty much after that point, we only saw one real battle between Pierre against both Alpines. I mean, Pierre is single-handedly the one inching Alpha Tauri slightly ahead because you gotta remember, those teams are in an extremely tight battle. They were tied for points at the beginning of this race, and Pierre is the one that's consistently delivering weekend after weekend. They're still tied even after this race now. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that one could go down to the line. A very low moment for me in this race was seeing Lance and Daniel DNF back to back. I feel like I was targeted. You're just DNFing two of my faves out there. What the hell was up with that? But honestly with Lance, I wasn't very surprised. Every time we saw him, it's like more body work was coming off. But now quickly Cass, how would you score the second half of this race? Excitement, eight. Racing, seven. Drama, eight. Total score for second half comes out to like 7.6, kind of brought that down to 7.5. There we go. On my side, my excitement was consistent with the first half at a six, racing, six, drama, at an eight. Putting my second half score at a 6.5. So when you combine both of our scores together, the Brazil Grand Prix of 2021 comes out to a score of a seven. Here's how the race compares to the other races so far this season. The race is pretty comparable to the US Grand Prix, except the outcome was reversed. So those are our thoughts on the race. Be sure to let us know yours down in the comments. Now it's time for our segment of Driver Watch. So let's see who we're gonna get. So we have Lando Norris, who had a very roller coaster of a race today, finishing off in 10th place, scoring the team one point. He was the birthday boy on Saturday, but Sunday just was not his 
day, lap one, turn one. I mean, I think that pretty much defined his race from there. He did what he could. Honestly, quite impressive that he still managed to get one point. But this is not looking good for McLaren. Not looking good for McLaren at all. Wrong place, wrong time, moved in a bit too quickly, and boom, puncture. It seems as if since the Russian Grand Prix, Lando has had a bit more of a hard time with his race weekends. He did also at one point re-meet up with Carlos on the track, and they also did get pretty close there again. I was worried the roles were going to flip and maybe Sainz would end up with a puncture, but they kept it clean, but not the best race from Lando today. We're going to be interested to see if Lando and McLaren are able to turn it around as Ferrari is getting quite the substantial lead for third place in the Constructors' Championship. Honestly, I am very much looking forward to moving on to Qatar because I am exhausted after this weekend between the drama, the fines, grid penalties, and this person has an issue, and we don't know what's going on, and why does it take 24 hours to make a decision? I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed. I just want to rest. Please let Qatar be eventful on track and not with these petty arguments between teams. Thank you. We'll have to wait and see what is to come. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and we will catch you in our next video. Bye.